Well, everybody, thank you for being here and welcome uh, to the Savannah Podcast and meet up in April. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how to grow uh, your podcasting audience. And uh, just to give everybody an overview of what we do, we just meet every month. Um, I uh, am Raz. I own a company called Pod on the Go, Podcast on the Go. And I produce podcasts. I've produced dozens, been involved with hundreds, it feels like. Um, but, you know, I've been doing it since 2013 and I just fell in love with it. You know, I've been to a couple of podcast media uh, conferences, uh, and it's just my my people. You know, once you once you find your your tribe, you know you got to stick with it. Uh, and Henrik, you would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, uh, I'm Henrik Deguiar. Uh Thanks so much. Um, I'm a podcaster as well. Uh, I have seven different series of podcasts. Uh, I can explain how I do seven at the same time, <laughs> but uh, I think import, uh, to start with, you need one, right? A mm -hmm. series, not just one episode. Uh, so I'm happy to talk about that. And then um, I'm also a consultant by trade, and I'm also a writer. Thanks. Awesome. And uh, Tyler is also my business partner, and. You help me get this uh, Savannah podcast meetup started. Tyler, you want to introduce yourself really quick? Sure. Yeah, I'm, my name is Tyler Redick. I'm a full-time videographer for this, uh, Visit Savannah, as well as a videographer with Therese um, and a podcaster. Awesome. Um, and while we're recording, does everybody else want to just give, a, give an idea of what their podcast is or what they want to do? Uh, just a brief overview. So if anybody's watching this, the recording, they can check you out. Trevenia, would you like to go first? Sure. So Trevenia Barber, I live in Rincon, Georgia. I have a podcast called Diary of a Doer that uh, supports a business that I own called Priority VA, which is a leadership and development and staffing company for entrepreneurs looking for administrative virtual support. So. Awesome. Awesome. And Ms. Francis, would you like to uh, tell everybody kind of what your podcast idea is about? Yes, no, maybe. I don't know. Hi, sorry, I was on mute. Um, hi, fine. everyone. <laughs> uh, my name is Francis Gillison, and yes, I'm interested in starting a podcast, um, generally just to have just dialogue on day to day conversations you have with your girlfriends, but really focus on um, problem solving and just really. I'm on here to learn more about the guys who are on here who have their podcast and just getting that audience um, started and um, just eager to learn more, really. Awesome. awesome. And Joe, I know you said you're just um, listening because you're interested in it, but what, what has you interested in podcasting? I'm trying to learn social media. I don't want, I'm middle-aged and I don't want to turn out of date. <laughs> well I, I definitely understand that because things move crazy fast like i don't even know what tiktok is i barely understand um snapchat you know so i, I understand i understand how you feel even though i'm not middle aged i don't think yeah uh but thanks for joining us everybody um so Henrik, how do you want to do this you have a you have a bunch of topics you want to cover as far as um, creating better content i have a bunch of topics i thought of as far as um social media marketing and stuff like that, growing your podcast. Um, do you, you want to go first and then I'll, I'll fill in after that? Sure. Yeah. Uh, and just you jump wanna, in as you go. You tell, tell everybody what the audience, uh, just so, so the viewing audience, including the YouTubers, uh, YouTube audience uh, knows what we're, what the subject uh, is for April. Uh, you yeah. Announce yeah. That? So the subject for April 2020 is growing your podcasting audience and how to do that effectively and efficiently. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm happy to start. Uh, so, so there's, uh, I have several uh, points around that. So I think it starts with great content because before you have an audience, you have to put out content on a regular basis, regular cadence, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, whatever that looks like. Um, but it has to be episodic or, or a series. It can't just be one episode and I'm done. That's not a podcast. That's just an audio <laughs> recording that very few people will probably listen to. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's uh, creating more episodes not necessarily longer episodes because attention span is uh, getting smaller, uh, regardless of whether there's a pandemic outside or not. Um, and um, expectations are only increasing while patience is decreasing, right? So mm -hmm. the shorter the maximum value, the better is, I think, the equation that I use. So most of my podcasts are five to 15 minutes. Um, so I will do a Zoom call for 15 minutes, record one, 
say hello, uh, give the format for it, record uh, with bulleted questions that they get in advance saying, hey, uh, I want to ask you this, this, and this. So they th think about it beforehand, even if I've never met them or seen them or know them at all. And they either say yes, no to the interview and they di digest the questions typically in advance. They come up with some thought points around that and their perspective and then they just give it. Mm. That's content, right? That's a recording. You can edit it. You can bounce it off of them if you want to. Uh, I do uh, because it's not just my reputation, it's theirs, right? And they're the ones that I'm interviewing um, regardless of the content or regardless of the topic, right? Uh, and everyone has a different topic on this on this series and uh, on this uh, this webinar. So, uh, and uh, likely everyone else will too. And there, there's not that many copycats, realistically speaking. Um, so, uh, I think the, the matter is more episodes, not longer. Uh, the next is uh, great quality content um, that you can't find anywhere else, right? So, the idea is not to recycle someone else's content, right? It's like, oh, they asked a question. I'm going to ask the same question to the same person and hope that they're going to give me a different answer. Um, that's called insanity. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> realistically speaking, um, there, the idea is to, to find speakers that sometimes never been recorded ever before. That's okay. Uh, because everyone has perspective on things, right? If they do and they're comfortable talking about it publicly, because it is a public thing, right? It's not a private thing. Um, that they're willing to talk about pu publicly and announce uh, um, their thoughts and beliefs and, and perspective on subject X or topic Y is this. Great. Let's talk about it and have a dialogue or just record like question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, which is the format that I use uh, in the interview formats. Monologues, you can do monologues if you want. Um, I found that they're less and less, less listened to. Um, typically, an, uh, uh, two people is better than one uh, because you have one person asking or, or even a dialogue between me and Raz, for example, is probably more interesting than just me ranting on all day long, uh, which you're not here for, right? Um, and then next um, is, to, to second, add to you, yeah, to add to your yes. first two, um, I would say that even if you do like a longer podcast to keep the quality high and to keep the attention span going is I would front load that with like a key takeaway from your episode. So you probably heard a lot of podcasts where they put in a, um, a highlight from the episode at the very beginning with a little bit of music underneath. That's just a way to catch people's attention and get them oh, to okay. listen to the entire episode. Yeah. Just, just to hook them in. Exactly. Yeah. So that, um, to, to add to what Henrik said, even if you do like a really long podcast, like a Joe Rogan style podcast is two hours long or three hours long. You kind of want to like hook people because nobody's going to listen to that long of an episode unless they know they're going to get something cool, some great information out of it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And I would add the next point would be around consistent cadence, right? So mm -hmm. regular release schedule. So if it's on Tuesday mornings, uh, every week, that kind of thing, or whatever your favorite day is. Um, but it, you want to see when people are actually going to listen to it um, for your type of audience. So my audience is typically niche technical subjects for the most part. That means it's weekdays. That's typically, uh, realistically, thir Tuesdays through Thursdays. So people can digest that content when it's businessy. I mean, they can digest it at 24-7 if they wanted to. Um, but uh, that, that's how I find my audience. Uh, if, if it's more a personal subject, maybe it's on some other day, right? Saturday, Sunday, whatever. Um, and then um, really cadence is really important and keep, continue doing that so they know when to expect your, when you're dropping that, that new episode. Um, the next uh, suggestion would be to have a, create a new category, a uh, blue ocean strategy as it's sometimes called. Mm. So I've created categories that don't exist out there um, because no one talks about it because it's a niche subject. So find a niche subject, not like, oh, I'm going to talk about politics. I'm going to talk about the same tech that everyone else does. I'm going to talk about the same religious topic that everyone else does. Uh, then you're, you're amongst a lot of noise, let's be honest, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, and you're going to get a lot, your podcast will get lost. If you're talking about a very unique subject, right. Uh, or unique enough that when you type in that, that key, those keywords into said podcast channel, you find very, very little ch uh, ch uh, shows or even episodes about it. That's, that's what you want to hit on. That's my recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, next would be um, build a following. 
right? So you want an email list, right? So you can email your followers, um, not sell the list necessarily. Um, social media following because, well, people are likely going to find you on social media. I, I talked to a podcaster yesterday in London. I found him on LinkedIn because he had headliner videos, the one mm -hmm. minute headliner videos of, you know, him talking to said guest about no. e point X. Sorry. Uh, that, that was awesome to me. And I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm checking out his podcast immediately because it's, it sounds amazing. Hmm. Um, hey, somebody else joined. Um, welcome chief's iPad. Yeah. <laughs> chief's iPad and Roz Allen. Welcome to the, welcome to the meetup. Yeah. Uh, uh then, uh, my next point would be, uh, a thousand true fans. Um, there's uh, a link to that. If you Google that, you will find who wrote that. Uh, his name is, uh, Kevin, Kevin, I'm going to find his name somewhere. <laughs> Sorry. Um, why am I not signing his name? Uh, I can't believe I can't. I can't Kevin think. Kelly. Kevin Kelly, isn't it? There you Kevin go. Kelly. Yes. That's it. Thank you. KK.org. Not three, just two Ks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> very important. <laughs> um, uh, and um, he, he talks about a thousand true fans, having a, a thousand true fans who are going to basically follow anything you do. And that's the kind of audience you want to build as not necessarily as quick as possible, but the, the ones that are going to continue coming no matter what you produce, no matter what you write, no matter what episode you come out, they're going to be like, wow, what is he doing now? Like, uh, you know, the, the, the um, how does he handle I, I, it? Yeah. I love that concept of a thousand true fans. Um, uh, an example of that is a rapper who passed away recently. His name was Nipsey Hussle. He was all in the news, but he did like a very, uh, I think brilliant marketing thing is that he created an album and he sold it for a thousand dollars. Um, just one album. But with that thousand dollars, he found who his thousand true fans were, but he offered them so much for it. I think they got like a backstage pass. They got, you know, a cell phone number so they could call them. And they got like this, just all this other stuff just for paying a thousand dollars for his album. He realized that they're going to support him no matter what. So just, just little stuff like that. You know, some people want to support you and see you succeed and just want to be, um, want to be associated with you. So maybe you can create something like that to make sure that you're singling out and targeting your, your fans, your biggest fans. Right. Yeah, that, that's key. Uh, my next point would be around um, <clears throat> to measure what works over time uh, and what doesn't, right? Uh, meaning measure your statistics, look at your statistics from, from your podcast you know, who, who's listening to what episode, right? And if, if one episode is about this topic and the other one is about that topic or with different, it's not just the speaker and it's not just their affiliation. Uh, people tie way too much to that, honestly. It's not just famous person X or well-known organization Y. It's the content of what you're saying, not what you're just, you're saying what the questions that you're asking and the answers that they're giving. Right. That's the biggest thing right there. And then uh, measuring like, okay, so if I have topic A, B and C uh, around, you know, the theme of my podcast, which one's getting the most amount of traffic? Like I, I talked to uh, yesterday, a, um, uh, a remote work podcast, a remote podcast, uh, podcast or remote work life. And um, he said the biggest topic right now is loneliness right? Not remote work, not like, oh, what tools do you use? No, 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 no. Loneliness because everyone's facing it, right? It was like, we're all stuck in our homes voluntarily and voluntarily for a long time, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? And, and we're dealing with that. So that was his, his uh, biggest, uh, and so now he's going to create more content around that, potentially mm -hmm. speaking, right? That makes sense, right? Um, so figuring out what's not obvious, right? Because it, you, you have your own beliefs of what might be popular, and then it's what your audience is actually listening to, right? Mm. And how long are they listening to it? Are they, are they downloading and listening, you know, for hours? I mean, some of the metrics show that, right? And where are they listening from? Are they all in the United States or are they somewhere else? Is, is it all in English, that kind of thing, right? And then last, my last point would be, don't stop posting. And if you do, your audience will leave you. Mm. They will divorce you. That's bad. <laughs> Not just in the divorce world, but in, in <laughs> podcasting world. So continue uh, releasing episodes. And the way to do that is you record several at a time and you release on a, say, weekly basis. So what I do is I, I will record like, say, four in a day or four in a week and then edit them maybe that same week or the next week and then release them 
the next few weeks. So I have four is one month, right? Um, and then just have that buffer all the time. So there's no like, oh, I have to do an episode tomorrow. I don't have any content. That's bad, mm. right? Mm. Then you're, you're stuck in like a uh, fire, fire uh, drill, firefighting mode, which is not okay. good in podcasting world. Fair? That's my points. Uh, what do you have, Russ? Uh, so after, after you create great content with all the tips that Henrik just gave you, um, you have to get people in front of it. You know, you have, you have this great product. You have this great, this great audio podcast that you're just trying to share with somebody. Now you have to get it in front of people. Um, so there's email marketing, right? You can just build an email list and send it out. But just other ways to think about it, like just put your, a link to your podcast and your email signature. You know, that as soon as people, you know, when, whoever you email, whenever you email them, you know, they're going to scroll down and see your name and your title and all that stuff. Have your podcast, a link to your podcast right there. That's just something simple that a lot of people forget about, um, even though we're sending hundreds of emails a week, if not more. Um, social media. Um, there are, you know, a hundred different platforms you can share on. Uh, my advice is to find one that you want to conquer, you know, just find one that you want to be an expert in. Um, for Henrik, that's probably LinkedIn. Um, for me with the direction I'm going to take my shows, uh, from here forward is going to be LinkedIn also, but for you, um, it could be Facebook. It could be, you know, Snapchat or TikTok or Instagram. It just depends on your audience and where they are and the type of people that will be interested in what you have to say. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, one of the biggest tips I can give you is to be a guest on related podcasts. Uh, because when you think about it, these are people that are already interested, already listen to podcasts. And if it's a related podcast, they're going to be interested in your podcast as well. So if you go on somebody else's podcast and they enjoy you as a guest, they're going to follow you, you know, and they know how to find you. You don't have to tell them how to download the, I, you know, the Apple app. You don't have to tell them how to, you know, subscribe and, you know, leave reviews. They already understand all that. So the, probably the biggest thing that helps a lot of people get that bump is to get on a, a related podcast. Totally. And the more followers they have, the better. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That goes without and, and saying. You can cross promote each other, right? So, so if you're on similar topics, like let's say we're, both of us are talking about, I don't know, whatever topic. Let's pretend it's the same topic for, for me and Raz or any of us, right? Mm -hmm. I interview you, you interview me. And release in different time frames, right? You might mm -hmm. release this month. I might release next month. So it's not like same day. That's right. not helpful to anybody. But you, you, you promote each other, and that's called cross promotion, right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. Because in podcasting, it's, uh, there's really no competition. You know, a person who likes you is going to listen to you because they like you, not because you're better than anybody else. Just because they, you know, they're your fan. Um, you can get you can get better, but there's no competition really. Like everybody grows. A rising tide raises all ships. That's kind of how podcasting is type of thing. Um, yeah. So that, and there's a, a couple websites. There's quite a few websites now, but one that I'm familiar with that I know is good is interviewvalet.com. They're really good at helping you get on other podcasts or uh, leading podcasters to you. And another one is uh, spotaguest.com. And it's more of a community, um, but it's a, uh, it's a growing community. I've been on there and everybody seems really genuine. So uh, spot a guest and interview valet are also great. Hey, yes. Hi, I have a little strategy that I've been using a lot when I'm a guest on other people's podcasts, depending on the topic that I'm being interviewed about. I will go back into my archives and find an episode that is similar mm. to the topic that they're talking about. And then I just sort of slip it in and oh, in episode 45 of my own podcast, I went I went 45 minutes on that topic. So if you want to hear more, right, that was a really Perfect. cool way for me to get listeners of those similar kind of genres to listen to my show. So that's another kind of way you can strategize that. No, that's great. That's great. And like along with that, like you can also have like a little hit list, you know, just by a side of like topics you want to make sure you hit, you know, websites you want to send them to or, um, you know, lead generators that you want to introduce them to. You know, just yeah, something to have. Them free downloads, right? Even when I'm on, when I'm asked to be a guest on a show, I will ask, can I, can I give a free download? Yep. Um, and, and then that's a way to get them back into your fold, right? So exactly, it's been exactly. Fun. Brilliant. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Yeah, just to go back and make sure that you know the link in the exact episode to send them to. Yeah, versus like what I would do is be like, uh, I talked about this before. What would I used to do anyway? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so another thing you can do is to start a um, related Facebook group or in-person group or meet up just like we did, uh, me, Henrik, and Tyler like we did with this, with this group. 
You know, we met a lot of cool podcasters around the city uh, just from doing this. So around Savannah, if you're watching this from outside of uh, outside of our area, we're in Savannah, Georgia. Um, but yeah, so that's that's something cool you can do. Whether it's, you know, Facebook groups are big. If I if I don't like Facebook personally, uh, but if I do use Facebook, it would be like the groups because then you have more control over what people see. You're able to communicate. You're able to kick people out who are trolls. You're able to talk to people and, you know, get used to them on a more personal level. You know, so Facebook groups are a great way to help build your audience. Um, and a couple more is to, you know, just finding great interview guests uh, to be on the show so that you can get access to their their knowledge and their authority, right? Because once you have a great guest, so my show's on podcast. If I could get Pat Flynn or Jordan Harbinger or, you know, all these other big name guys, Tim Ferriss, right? If I get them on my show, then that create, I'm now an authority by association, <laughs> you know? So that's, that's just another great way to grow and build your authority um, within podcasting and within your industry. You know, I have a friend, um, service business mastery, Tersh Blissett, he's out of, you know Tersh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy, a good friend of mine. Yeah, but he uh, interviews service industry experts all over, and now he's, a, he's an authority on, on the topic uh, within the podcasting world. And it's just from interviewing all these great people. So whenever he goes to a, a plumbing or a HVAC or a, um, you know, whatever, a lawn care conference, you know, everybody knows him, and everybody respects him, and everybody wants to talk to him about the podcast and all the, and the way, all the ways he helped them. So it's just really, um, really a way to build your authority uh, within whatever industry. Um, speaking at events, you know, your podcast, the beautiful thing about podcasting is it, help, is it helps with um, your public speaking ability, especially if you're speaking on a topic that you know about. So speaking at um, events will also help you get the word out. And you'll, more than that, you'll get to meet people in person. So you'll build that connection with people. Um, in person, and they'll want to share your your podcast. You know, they'll say, "I heard this great speech today on podcasting. You should check this person out." Right. So consider speaking at you know some events or putting on your own event and inviting speakers or you know doing just doing a Zoom conference just like this. Very simple to do, um, and you know it's it's worth it because now I know all of you. Now I know all of you guys. You know me, and I see you know Francis's little baby right there. So I, I know her. <laughs> uh, and last but not ne last but not least is uh, something a lot of people forget about is uh, printed marketing material. You know, so have some have some flyers or have some uh, you know some some a business card or a you know a free handout that you give people in person. You know, whenever they come to your business and say, "Hey, you can listen to this podcast episode. It goes through all of these this checklist." So the same free lead generator that you have to get people to email you, you can have it printed out. And uh, a great resource for that is canva.com. If you're not familiar with that, you should be. It's the, you know, you can use that templates and create some amazing looking graphics and presentations and business cards and logos and all kinds of cool stuff um, just from canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. And those, uh, those are my tips, you know, as far as getting in front of people and getting the most, uh, you know, most listeners for your podcast. Does anybody else have anything else they want to add or, or share? You just gave me a really good idea, actually. Yeah. Good. Uh, you were talking about sort of having, you know, the, the printed marketing material in person or whatever. And like, depending on your service or your business, you could actually use that as an onboarding sequence. Use mm -hmm. your podcast as an onboarding sequence to keep people engaged with you in the fold, right? If you go listen yes. to episode four of my podcast, it's going to walk you through exactly the X, Y, Z steps you need to engage with my service. That is a good mm -hmm. idea. Good, good. I'm glad I, I'm glad I helped. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. And for people out there onboarding, it's like, if you're not familiar with that term, then it's basically just like how you get people into your, your system, right? So with, you know, Apple, you buy an iPhone and then you buy the apps and now you're in their system. You know, now you can't go to, you can't go to, you know, switch to a Samsung phone easily because now you're in all the Apple system apps, you know, you're, you know, you're in that community. So it's a great way just to get people into your, your podcast, your business, your community, whatever, you know, whatever you're offering. Yeah, you can become a lead magnets. So, so I actually used it. Uh, I, I interviewed like a bunch of people on a topic. I transcribed it all. And then I created a book. 
And then, then I really, I scheduled the release of the podcast episodes promoting the book at the end with all the mm. transcripts in it. Mm. So, so with add, adding added context in the beginning of the book, it's like this book is about blah, you're in this, you're going to learn about X and Y and Z. And here's all the guests I, were, uh, I interviewed. And you can either check out the audio or you can read along or you can just read the text. So giving content because content is uh, created in different ways and it's also consumed in different ways. Some people like to watch, some people like to listen, some people like to read, some people have to do a combination of those at the same time. And that helps a lot. Um, so, so, um, I've, I've done that several times, um, and it does work. Um, and it helps because people, it gives you more authority to have a book, um, to, as a speaker and as a podcaster and just as, because it's, it's a, it's almost like a calling card. It's almost like a business card because uh, people may not necessarily read it, but they're like, Oh, he's an authority figure on blah because you wrote a book about it. Right. Even if I interviewed 50 people about it and released a year's worth of episodes, 52 equals 52 weeks equals a year <laughs> of podcasts. Right. We yeah. think not, not. Uh, <laughs> it works that way. Awesome. Yeah. Tyler, you have anything to add? Uh, I think just uh, as a video guy coming into podcasting, story comes first and foremost. Um, good storytelling is going to be engaging and it's going to have the hook and it's going to get people in. Um, so there's a lot of things that, a lot of technical things to figure out as far as getting clean audio and where do I publish everything. But if it, comes down to like the most important thing in my opinion is just having a good story to tell and finding the right people who are going to be engaging to listen to. Mm. I agree. I agree. Cool. Um, Chief and Roz, do you guys want to introduce yourself? Either or you might have to unmute. Maybe, maybe not. Any questions from anybody? Joe, Francis? Uh, no questions, but I would like to thank you all. I, I think I've, I have a lot of notes here. And, oh, good. Um, Roz is actually one of the women that I was telling you about. We're trying to do this podcast together. I, I awesome. want to say Chief is the other person, but I'm not okay. sure. I was hoping they would introduce themselves, but <laughs> it, it's okay. <laughs> but thank you. That's nah, nah, all good. No, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. <laughs> any any other points, uh, Travinia, that you can think of? How long Howdy have you done your Harbinger. podcast? Harbinger. Uh, I started January of 2019, so uh, okay, yeah. just a little bit over a year. Nice. Uh, I was just talking with my team the other day saying, like, I am so proud of the consistency. Uh, mm. we, we have built a really robust system for our podcast um, mm -hmm. because I, I teach systems. It's what I do, right? So, uh, so it's been able to just keep us really consistent. I still released episodes every single week last year, and I took almost nine weeks off, uh, awesome. but episodes still weren't coming because I batched my content, right? Like, so we created a plan. And so when Henrik was talking about um, being consistent and creating a good content plan, like we decided, we broke it down into different topics we wanted to talk about and we cycle them like every five weeks. It's a different sort of style of topic. And then hopefully interviews will intersect with that. And it allowed me to just go and batch, you know, I'll record four or five episodes a day. Um, and because I've got a great podcast editor, which ever, I believe everyone needs a great podcast editor because all I have to do is hit record and I put the Dropbox link in an air table and I don't have to touch the rest of it. Yep. <laughs> that is the only way I'm able to be consistent. But um, batching content has helped us tremendously. But when you were talking about Hendrik, I, Hendrik, I had a question because you were talking about um, – uh, something about the episodes and oh, how interviews tend to do better. For my show, my solo episodes do better than my interviews. Awesome. And I've had pseudo popular people on my show and I'm like, that's crazy. And are so, they step-by-step -step instructions though? Um, sometimes they are. Sometimes okay. they are. Yeah. Uh, but, but what it led me to believe is that thousand raving fans piece. 
you know, so they're not necessarily listening so that they can hear Amy Porterfield on my podcast. Like that doesn't matter. Mm. It's so it was just an interesting thing. So don't get so caught up and you have to have the coolest guests on. It's like you have to reach your audience with the message that they really want to hear from you. Um, and so I, I think people can get intimidated about creating a podcast because they're like, I don't know who I'm going to have on my show. Uh, and, and so don't let that stop you, I think, from from putting the message that you're supposed to put out there. And um, then the final thing I would do is when you are speaking at events, um, to always have a related podcast that you can push people to that is in relation to whatever you're talking about at events. And, and virtual events work too. Yep. I think we can think, oh, I'm not speaking at podcast movement, so I, it doesn't count. You know, right. I'm doing, I'm, I'm speaking at We Are Podcast um, next month. And it, it awesome. was going to be in Australia. And it switched to now it's a virtual thing, right? And like, it still counts. So don't mm-hmm. think that because you're not on a big fancy stage that your speaking isn't, doesn't matter. Right, right. Yeah, I agree. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think all, almost everything is going to be remote for a while. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to be working remotely for a while, if not for even longer, <laughs> in my opinion. So uh, I, I don't think that we should be worried about uh, big events, to your point. I mean, this can be a big event, and it's just a number of the people who are going to watch, not just now during the recording, but the YouTube too, which will likely have a longer tail, if you understand yeah. the concept of the people who will watch now, right? Like, because this is live right now. And then the recording afterwards for a year from now, you'll probably have a lot more than the audience that's here right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is the goal. And you know, I think for, for Joe and for, you know, Francis and Roz who are like looking at beginning a podcast, like all you got to do is help one person. It's one connection that you've got to make, right. That could open the door to have a hundred more listeners to your show. And so just that's like right. write the show for the one person um, that you really want to have listen. And then I think that's where the magic happens. Um, sometimes I think when we hear about when I was looking at starting a podcast, I was scared because I'm like, who is going to listen to me mm-hmm. and creating that sort of avatar of like who I really wanted to listen to my show. That really helped me dial in what I was going to talk about. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Right. Well, and it can be a dialogue between the two of you, right? If, if let's say, uh, Francis and, and Roz wants to do an, uh, there's a dialogue between the two of them. They, that works very well. There's some very well-known channels uh, that uh, do that, that, yep. that have millions of hits, uh, whether it's a video, uh, you know, b- between the two of you a- and, and then, you know, like Zoom, it's a great tool because it records video. Like, so you can have a dialogue like this. You can put that on YouTube. You can have a dialogue that becomes a podcast. So you, now you have two social media channels built in right? And with very little editing, right? Uh, you put an intro, you put an outro, maybe a mid roll, you're done. And then to your, to your point again, to Trevinia, uh, I have had at her, I have seven podcasts. You think I added all of my so I don't edit anything myself. <laughs> I send everything else in a different time zone. So it gets done while I'm sleeping. And I send like four episodes at a time. I pay him for the, for, for his time of, of editing. And it gets done while I'm asleep. And then in the morning I review it and I send it for, for approvals and have it transcribed in a, an AI transcriber. Yeah. Um, so uh, <clears throat> Chief, Chief's iPad asked, uh, how do you find a podcast editor? And uh, so uh, personally, I do edit podcasts with Pod on the Go. Um, so you can reach out to me, podonthego.com, and I can help out. But also, uh, I know uh, that I use a VA to help me with editing as well. So finding a VA for yourself might be even a better option. Um, so, you know, Henrik, I know you use a VA. Did you find them through Upwork? Upwork.com. Yeah, yeah Upwork.com. You just type in uh, audio editor and you find one that uh, has obviously 90 plus percent success doing it many, many times and you usually Perfect. have good results. Uh, I mean, it, it's just really how much dialogue do you want to have with the individual, right? Because mm-hmm. if you want, if you want Raz to, to, to do it and, and, do that work for you. Great. By all, by all means. And then you can have that dialogue, that personal relationship and all that help, right? Because Raz has done it many, many times. Uh, I've never actually spoken to my audio editor ever (laughs) in audio form. (laughs) Okay. Not once. (laughs) And I don't need to, because all I, I, I send them the edits. It's like, here's the intro file. Here's the outro file. Here's the raw file. Here's what I need you to cut out. Here's what I need you to add in. Send when you're done. <laughs> Timeline X. <laughs> right. And, and Trevenia, uh, how, did you, how did you find your podcast editor? 
so I, it, it is the, it is the one redeeming quality that I have is that I know a lot of people. Uh, and so I, I happened to have met them at, uh, an event that I was speaking at and they offered to come to my house and set up all of my equipment nice. and sit with me while I did my first five episodes. Awesome. And I said, if you do that, I'll do a podcast. And he said, yep, I'll be there. We picked some dates and he made it happen. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Cool. All right. Well, I guess that's it. Uh, just to wrap things up, if, unless anybody else has any more questions. Um, I would love to uh, talk to you guys if you're interested in starting a podcast um, or if you have any more questions on podcasting or more than anything, um, I would love to know what else, what other topics people want to talk about, want us to talk about. So on, uh, on the meetup.com, we have a survey uh, where you can fill out and it's just, you know, just go through and pick a few topics that you're interested in hearing more about as far as podcasting. And then either we can talk about them, or we can have an expert uh, come on and talk about them with us. So, yeah. So please go check that out. Savannah podcasting meetup on meetup.com. Of course, you guys saw it, but just go, go fill out that survey for us. Uh, I have a question. Um, yeah. It might help your YouTube listeners and any of the people on here that are looking at starting a podcast. Do you have anything maybe on pod on the go.com that would be kind of a step-by-step -step that opt in that maybe you can push people to that they might be able to get some more info. Cause then that might spur on some more questions that they can bring to these meetup conversations. Yep. Yep. I, I do. I have one big blog post. Actually it was like me and Henrik and Tyler, we did it uh, before one of our first recordings and it's basically just how to start a podcast, podcasting one on one. So what I'll do is I'll I'll share that uh, with Meetup and everybody who joined today on the Meetup, the Meetup group. But yeah, but I'm I'm working on redesigning my blog, my uh, my website, and it's going to be a. So for the past three years, I've been producing podcasts, and I have several clients. But what I've noticed after I open up a studio, I'm in my studio now. You see the background. But after opening up my studio, I noticed that it's really hard to. Um, manage a business and grow a business and um, take care of your clients, right? It's hard to market and provide a great service at the same time. So what I'm working on now is creating a booking platform for other podcasting studios and hopefully creating like a podcasting hub so that podcast studios around the country and around the world, uh, you know, have like a marketing platform they can turn to where they know they can get new customers. So kind of like an Airbnb for podcasting studios. Yeah. So that's coming. That's coming around the block. It'll be here soon. Yeah. Hey, Raz, can, can we just um, tell people what the, the potential topics are from the survey so people can uh, maybe even vote right now uh, audibly? If, if, yeah, uh, that will be good. Let me get to yeah, the... We get, we get traffic now. And then we tell everyone on the YouTube audience too um, and everyone listening to it. Yes. Let me find the survey. Sure. in a timely manner, right? Maybe I emailed it. Cool. So cool, where's everybody from? I'm in Rinkin. Born and raised? I'm in Bluffton. No, I moved here from Colorado from Denver three years ago. Wow. Okay, and Bluffton? Yep. Uh, Savannah, Georgia, native. Oh, native. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm an upstate New Yorker. I've been in Savannah for two years. And I am from Statesville, North Carolina, originally. Um, but this is right, a little north of Charlotte. I cannot find a silly survey. Uh, I found the, it in an email. Um, you want me to read them off? Yeah. Yes. Yes, please go for it. Sure. Sorry. Uh, so we got the, the ones that we haven't done yet. <laughs> um, we have networking. We have equipment and gear. We have editing and production. Oh, we just did growing your audience and we just did monetization earlier. We have getting guests and we have automation. Any of those interest people more than others? Automation, getting guests, editing, production, networking, equipment gear. That's all of them. <laughs> and uh, any, any of them uh, prefer, are preferred by others on, the, on, the, uh, on the, this episode right now? 
I'm always interested to see what other people are doing for their automation, uh, simply because uh, I think what we've done is pretty cool, but I'm like, what if we're missing a whole bunch of stuff? And I don't know. So I'd love to hear that. Yeah. Okay. So automation. Yeah. Like systemizing your podcast, Siri mm -hmm. workflow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please. What was you want to speak and uh, let other people know what you're doing? Oh, I will do whatever y'all want me to. I just want to help people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, let's do it after May because that's what I'm speaking about at We Are Podcast. So I'll already have okay. the talk done and then I'll, I can I can come on and do it for you guys. Perfect. So June. Perfect. That'll be cool. <laughs> That'll totally be cool. Works. Awesome. Well, there's our, there's our June episode. <laughs> yep. yep. Cool. All right. Well, well, if, if you don't have anything right now, just keep joining us and we enjoy doing this. So we'll be here. We're trying to keep it consistent. Henrik always stays on top of me, so we're not going to miss anything. Well, thank you everybody for joining and uh, hopefully we'll see you next month. Thanks for having us. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.